Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Woman Hit channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andal and Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today we are talking about 10 ways to make him number one without making yourself last. What does that mean? Well, just because you make someone number one does not mean you are uh, if you don't make yourself number one, then somehow you're not going to be valued. It isn't, it isn't like all or nothing. Like you don't become to- totally self-absorbed or you have none of your needs met. Because what do we mean by making them number one? What does that mean? For those that don't know what that means. Yeah, good, good uh, question. Making somebody number one means you think about them and put a priority on them. It doesn't mean that if you have a children that they're last on the list. Some people think it's either number one or they're barely on the bottom. Being number one doesn't mean everyone else gets totally sidelined. Yes. I think when I think of number one, I think of priority, making him a priority in your life. That's what I, that's the best word I I think that describes it. I also had a lady ask me recently, well, why, why should I make him number one? Shouldn't we make each other number one? What do you have to say about that? You can only, you can, yeah, that's true. She's right. But the problem is you can't instruct him to make you number one. It's voluntary. If you want to be number one in someone's life, you have to kind of inspire that in him. Like you inspired him to want to marry you. You can't say you need to marry me because I'm a good match for you. Everyone instinctively knows you don't do that. It doesn't work. Yeah. For those of you that really want to learn a little bit more about this topic, getting kind of deeper into what it means and why it's beneficial in your marriage. We actually did a video about making him number one, what it means and how important it is. And then we've also done, we also did a video, I can attach both of these videos about why should women do it all? (laughs) Meaning why are we the ones kind of leading all of this? Why shouldn't the man have to do all these things? So watch those so that we, we won't get into too many different topics in this video. And that way we can stick to the 10 ways, really simple, easy ways, whether you are newly married, whether you were dating, whether you have a brand new baby, whether you're you know, like me, you have kids that are younger, but I don't have a brand new baby. It doesn't matter what life stage you're in. You can do these things. Let's get into our list. Number one, keeping him in your daily thoughts. What does that mean? That's easy. It means that you you think about him. I, I wonder how he's doing. Uh, what, what would he like for dinner? I'm thinking for me, I think about how much I appreciate him. I do it all the time. I look at him and I think I'm so grateful that he's healthy. And you can't take for granted somebody will always be there. This is probably really easy for those of you that haven't been married quite as long, or perhaps you don't have kids yet. This is, or you're dating. <laughs> this is probably yeah, really yeah. easy, but this can be uh, something to get into the habit of that may be kind of difficult at first. If you've been married a long time, you're not used to thinking about him and it, everything kind of becomes maybe a task or a chore when you're married for a while. If you can get into that kind of rut of, oh yeah, what does he want for dinner? But, but what you just said, I wonder how his day's going. I wonder what he might want for dinner. Thinking about all of those things and connecting them actually allows you to think about it deeply without spending a lot of time on it. If you're really busy, it's hard to think about him. I mean, I know me, I'm really busy all day with kids. It's hard to stop and think about that. You know, I know that sounds silly, but... For me, the the essence of Bob, whether he's here or not, is always around me. I'll go. He's not he's not as tidy as I am. Let's put it that way. And so I'll see his shoes, or I'll see some his cologne on the counter. And there's all these little reminders of him around our house, and that allows me to also think about him. It prompts yeah. it. All right, that's a good one. The second one is. Greeting him, and this includes saying goodbye. So hellos and goodbyes. Hellos and goodbyes are important. Now, sometimes the woman may have a job. She may leave first, but you still can say goodbye. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Bob and I always do that. If he's leaving and I'm somewhere in the house, he tries to find me to say go. He doesn't just leave. Yeah, and I've seen you guys Because sometimes that. he leaves and I don't know he's leaving yet. So he'll find me or I'll find him. Why is this important? It's another uh, way to demonstrate how important that person is in your life. You know, it, it's like you become a witness to each other's life and, and all these little things. And they combine uh, to be your entire life. Years and years and years of this make up 
your life. And it's all, it's almost all small things. You know, it's funny. I hear ladies say things like this all the time. Like, oh, you know, when we were dating, we were this way. When we were first married, we were this way. And I don't know what happened. And I think this one is so simple saying goodbye, saying hello. That's what you do when you're dating. Cause you sort of, you sort of have to do that, right? You kind of have to greet each other when you're dating and you're excited to see each other. And maybe you're not as excited after years and years and years of marriage. Maybe you are, but I think as you practice this, you start to become excited, which sounds like it can't, it's too good to be true, but it actually is true. As you practice this, you actually do grow excitement again. And you remember what it was like when you were dating and you used to do that all the time. It's almost like you're reminiscing every day on what it was like when you felt first fell in love. You can capture that again. As we take our lives for granted. What, yeah. what, if he, what if he didn't come back? How would you feel then? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're busy, this doesn't mean drop everything in life and go to him. It means, you know, put some priority, even just eye contact and a smile sometimes is a, is a form of hello. And, and if he works from home, when he comes out of the office, say hi to him. How are you? How's it going? It, there's so many variations of this. I think so many women take it so literally. When he comes in and your eyes light up, he, that's nothing you say. It's yeah. something that he can see. And your eyes will light up as you appreciate him and you think about him. And that validates him, which is really important. You know, if, if there's anybody out there watching that has a pet, a dog, a cat, I don't know about you, but my husband, when he comes home and we've always had a dog, the dog always greets him. And it's one of his favorite things about dogs. I love it when I come home and they're always waiting for me. And I, not that we're dogs, but I think there's something to be said about that, um, that connection, that understanding that animals can have waiting for you to come home. It makes you feel so loved. There's a reason why it makes you feel loved. So why wouldn't you do it? I mean, why wouldn't you do it? You married him. You, you think you would want to greet him and say goodbye. I don't know. And that's, that's just, simple. The third one is. Start quality conversations with him. What does that mean? Quality conversations are things not like, did you bring the butter home? That can get into like in my book on intellectual intimacy, where you talk about things that you can bond on subjects that you can bond on. Like I, I saw a story today on the internet about such and such, or I noticed something about one of our children. And, and these are quality conversations where you know, you know, you're not going to be arguing about this. This is something you connect on and you can, and it's a way of, it's another way of bonding with the man too. Yeah. And I think you get bonus points if it has something to do with him and something he's particularly interested in. Like if he's had a new job and let's say it's been six months, maybe saying to him, so now that you've been in your new job for six months, what do you think? Uh, or, I you know, like something it. like something like that. It allows him to, wow, she's thinking about me enough to ask me. And it's an open-ended question. So he kind of has to fill in the blank. You know, <laughs> The fourth one is, oh, Listen to him with an open mind. And what do you think that means? And why does that make him feel important? Well, sometimes we listen and not considering what is his intent. Sometimes those, I think that refers to conversations that can, can end up in arguments because we, we don't pay attention to what he, like, what does he mean by that? Was he trying to uh, get something out, explain something to me? Was he trying to get me to understand something? And then if I, if I, switch gears to what was he intending to say, it opens up so many more options. Yeah. I, I always hear, I feel like the, some ladies fall into this trap of what's he up to now, or what's he trying to do now? And I think, you know, maybe he has done some things that maybe you're not fully trusting of some of his ideas, but I think you can get yourself into this trap of always assuming kind of the worst in him. Even when he does have a an idea maybe he wants to share with you or a dream and you might squash it and not really mean to do that because maybe he has had a history of some bad ideas. But I think, you know, this one to me is really important when it comes to, you know, his dreams, his ideas, him wanting to solve problems. He wants to feel competent. He wants to feel successful. He's sharing something with you and you are like, I got him figured out. No, just listen to him with an open mind. Maybe he wants to invest in something and he's telling you about it. Just listen to him. I think that helps him to feel love that you are giving him a shot. You're giving him a chance. And I know that sounds probably incredibly vague. I don't know if you have any examples, but my husband, when I was pregnant with our second child, he really wanted to buy me a specific car, 
you remember this? Mm -hmm. And I didn't think we could afford it. And he said, it's safe. I want the kids in a safe car. I want you in a safe car. We're gonna have a brand new baby. And I, you know, he used to have a history of maybe not like a little bit overspendy. Like he used to, when I first met him, he was kind of a spender. And so I'm always kind of, I, especially when I first got married, I'm kind of hesitant to hear his ideas about spending because I'm like, okay, I'm more of the saver and he's a spender. But I, I listened to him with an open mind. And I remember at the time you had said to me, just let him, he just let him do this, let him do this for you. And I'm so glad that I listened to him because he was right. And it's been an amazing car and we ended up being fine. I don't know what we would do without that car. So even though I had this kind of pre-decided mindset, he's not the greatest with money. Now I'm starting to realize he can have some really wise choices with money and I'm going to listen to him more. I think just that's kind of what this one is about is give him a chance and, and listen to his ideas, even if they're Maybe they aren't a good idea, but listening to them will give him that sense that you, you prioritize him in your life. Uh, the number five is ask for his opinion. Men love to feel competent. It's not that women don't. We do too, but it's especially important to them. If you say, oh, and if you say, what do you think? Then the other half of that is don't put down what he said. Right. <laughs> What's an example of asking him for his opinion every day, like if in an everyday setting? For me, it's like um, asking him what he thinks, what he would like me to wear that day. Now oh. I've learned that if he says it, I better do it. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't, if I don't want it, if I know what I want to wear, don't put him in that position of saying I'd like you to wear this, and I think, oh, I don't feel like wearing that. I don't. Then why did I ask? So, right. but asking him what he thinks I would, he would like me to wear that day. Cause I can't decide her. Yeah, I've tried that with my husband and he doesn't care what I wear. <laughs> he doesn't really, yeah. but, but it works with movies. Like if I'll say, well, do you want to watch this or this, or do you feel like doing this tonight or doing this tonight? It really helps me to do two because it allows, I can narrow down the two things that I want and then he can choose. And it's better than what do you want to watch? Well, I don't know. What do you want to watch? <laughs> I don't know. Where do you want to go to dinner? Where do you want to go? <laughs> It allows him yeah, to kind asking, of like, asking him his opinion. Uh, what it can be something uh, political. What do you think? It, but it needs to be something that you genuinely want to know, yeah. and not something yeah. you're you're going to wait for him to say just the wrong thing so you can tell him how that's not right or you don't agree with it. What do you think but about men, this going on with our kids? What do you think about the situation yeah. that happened? What would you do? Yeah, yeah, and things like I'm stumped. I don't know what to do about this. Yeah, and get his because a lot of times, and, and when you mention children men will have a different idea and approach and sometimes they're right on because we're That's thinking true. so emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. The sixth one, this one came from you because I know you've done this all, all of all of my life. I've seen you do this. When I serve dinner, I don't usually do family style. I don't plate stuff, but desserts, I usually plate. And so when I do it, I serve him first. It's a way of, reminding myself and mm -hmm. respecting him. And I always, not just serving him first, I always look at the, maybe the pieces I've cut and give him what I think is the best one. Right. And give it to right. him. If I, if we split a sandwich, I cut it in half. I give him what looks like, if there is one, the better half. I, uh, uh, he doesn't know I do it. He doesn't do notice it. any of this. I've seen no, him. He no, doesn't, he's just no. like, oh, thanks. Like he doesn't notice, but it's, it, I like that you're saying it's something that you do to remind I do. you to remind me when I, when I pack a lunch for us, when we go do uh, clinics together and I pack like a cookie, I'll, I'll make sure he has, I look, which one's the biggest one. And I get it to him. I also fold his laundry first. I put his laundry away first and he has no idea. Ever since I started putting my husband's laundry away first, I can tell you, I didn't always do that. And, and when you explain you do it for you not for him because i always used to think well he doesn't know so why would i do it he doesn't know he or explained, care explained yeah. do it for you i thought oh and the reason why we call this video making him number one without putting yourself last i gotta put the laundry away it doesn't matter what order <laughs> i put it away so why not put his away first and it reminds me it trains me to say oh you know, these, the, his socks are looking kind of, I should get him some new ones. They're kind of looking run down or that, you know, I've noticed he's been wearing this shirt so many times. It reminds me to kind of think about mm -hmm. different little tiny things about him. It's really helpful. Well, and I've noticed maybe there's a little seam on a pair of pants or a shirt that's kind of coming undone when I do. And I think, oh, yeah. no, I need to fix that. If you don't I'm do it, telling you. If you don't do it first, you might have a tendency to speed through it like me, or I'm just speeding through it. But when I think, okay, I'm doing his first and folding it first it allows me to slow down. And maybe that isn't, maybe that isn't the same for everybody, but that's what it's been for me. It's really helpful. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Number seven, stick up 
for him with others. Hey! I've been doing this all the time. I just noticed how many women don't do it. And there's yeah. a, kind of almost a fad out there. I don't know if you, it's in your life too, all of yes. you ladies, but there's a fad of putting one's husbands down or one's boyfriends down. Yeah. In public, because it's like, that's what women do to bond with each other. I don't even know what it is, but it, it isn't, it isn't good and say, oh yeah, man, um, uh, God bless him. Or what, what would he do without me? Him? I hear that a lot. I don't know what he'd do without me, which I, you know, the spirit behind it might be kind of like funny and innocent, but I think there can be a little bit too much of it as you're describing. And it's, especially in front of them, it, it puts him down and it makes him feel uh, you know. <laughs> men do it. Men do it too. I've heard men yeah. say to me, oh, you're still putting up with him. And things like that. And I, and I'm always glad they do because I always say something along the lines of, are you kidding? He is the best thing ever. And they don't hear that much. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've heard so many, my, my female friends say things about their husbands and I say, really, I just love it when Jose does it or Jose is great about that. You know, I'll just, I mean, not to brag, but just kind of like, oh, he's, he's great. He's amazing. And they're always kind (laughs) of, I'm not used to it. It doesn't happen enough. But, yeah. you know, you, it, I can always see that it makes him feel, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of sings a little bit, but I think it, I know it makes him feel good that he's got a, he's got a lady that's kind of sticking out for him. He's great. And tells yeah. people he's great. Yeah. Number eight is similar to number seven, but a little bit different. Say nice things about him behind his back. <laughs> Why is that important? Usually we'll get back to him. Yeah. It often does. And, and it helps you, it's again, it's for you, put him number one. When you're with uh, some ladies, you're going out to lunch or something and they start talking about men. So my husband is so great at that. Mm-hmm. I, I love the way he does this or never does that. I love yeah. that. I, you know, I go around telling people how great he, my husband is at making pizza because he makes those homemade pizza. You know, you have those, those fire, fire pizzas. And it does get back to him. It's like, kind of surprising. Hey, I heard, hey, Jose, I heard that you're great at making pizzas. He's like, ooh. <laughs> It makes him feel so good. Hear that from your wife. Yeah. See, so when you do it behind his back, there's a feeling of it being even more sincere. Yeah. Because it wasn't true. there. Yeah. And it's don't, don't say it to say it like, oh, I got to say this. It has to be something that you really do admire about him. It can't just be something fake. It has to be something that you're practicing all these things we're talking about. You're thinking of him. You're putting him in, his th- in your thoughts. You're serving him first. And you notice these things about him. It's kind of like they all connect to each other. I love that one. Um, number nine. Yeah, these these are all really small things. If he says, "Hey, why don't we do? Why don't we go out and do this?" instead of saying, "Okay," which you could do, you can just say, "That is a really great idea," and it validates him. It's it's a little it's more than just this saying. Is so okay. so small, but so big. I, I mean, yeah. it's, bar- it's almost it's barely anything that you have to do. And this one can be a tough one to get in the habit of if you're not used to it. But like you said, what a great idea! Or oh, that's that's a good point. Oh, yeah, or he'll say something. And you say, you're right. That's 100% yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And men, it's not that we don't love it, but especially means a lot to them. Yeah. Any of the men watching this, I would just like to hear them if they <laughs> if they agree with that one, because I've heard so many men say that they love to hear that. It well, sounds so I simple to, to me. <laughs> I have to say, uh, Bob told me he was at, um, had a patient at the hospital and she was, I don't know, I don't know her situation, but he just told me this one part of it that he told her she's having marriage problems and he told her. To, that simple thing to validate what he says, tell him it's a good idea. And she looked like, uh, that's really scary. I mean, that was a, I've never done that. And he said, just try it. Just say, that's a great idea. Or, wow, I wouldn't have thought of that. Or, or uh, you're right. You're hundred percent right. She's used, she was used to kind of putting down or kind of arguing with everything. Like she was yeah. afraid he'd be arrogant or something. It's surprising how many couples are like that, that, that they talk to each other like that. And as, especially women, they, they, they kind of fall into this mothering kind of squashing, squashing your ideas down and, it, and you don't even really realize it. I don't think we really mean to do it. I don't think women mean to be that way, but we fall into it and boy, it, it just, it just makes him feel so incompetent. And he, he just, oh, he doesn't even want to offer his ideas. Right. I love that one. The last one is... taking care of your physical appearance. I can just feel people being like, wait a minute. (laughs) I know. But what, why is that important? And what, what specifically are you talking about here? 
men, one of their primary needs is to feel like they're with an attractive companion or spouse. It makes them feel like they want to show her off, like, look what I've got. And so taking care of yourself is validating him. It makes him feel like it's good for you. It's one of those that's a win-win, you know, it's good for you. And, and when you do, you'll have better self-esteem. So that's good. But it makes, you know, it makes him feel like he wants to take you out and show you off to other men. And they, they don't say anything to other men, but they're just like, look what I've got. And for those out there that might be in a place in their lives where they don't feel their best, they don't feel like they look their best. Maybe you have a hard time feeling motivated to get ready. Maybe you don't have time and it's really hard for you to spend a lot of time on yourself. Just start small. This is, this could be just as simple as, you know, prioritizing that your hair is really clean and well-kept and a little tiny bit of makeup. Maybe it's even just a better skincare routine. Maybe it's better sleep. It could be really tiny things that take care of your appearance. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel I feel for the women out there that maybe have like little babies and it's, it's, it can be tough. They feel kind of like, well, even when I get dressed up, I feel like I don't look good. And I think this can just be small things. And as you start small and you start realizing, recognizing how that feels, it helps motivate you to do a little bit more. Right. Yeah. It's not, we're not talking about like going all out every day because a lot of the people in our audience are are stay at home moms and they might want to be more casual and that's okay. But just you can be casual and still look well-kept and nice and feminine. You can still look attractive and be really, really casual. Even if you're wearing really simple clothes, just do your hair and, you know, like just, just look nice. It, It will show him and especially bonus points. If it's something that he likes on you, if it's how he likes you to look, he'll notice that you're doing your hair the way he likes or wearing the things that he likes on you. So that's our list. That's our 10 things you can do to make him number one without putting yourself or anyone around you last. Hope you enjoyed the list. We'd love to hear what all you have to add to this list. Easy things that anyone can do to make him feel number one. I know a lot of ladies out there are big fans of the baking and the cooking and the treats and things like that. We we didn't put that on there because we really want it to be things that literally just take like no time at all. Quick, quick, quick things. And some women have never really cooked. And so that's hard. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of like the little bit more obvious ones. And these ones are a little bit more, you know, mental things you can do. Thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel grow and hit like on the video so that we know you're here watching it with us. We are here every week. So don't forget to check back with us. All of the places you can find our books and workbook are attached to this video. If you want to learn more about these topics, you definitely need to read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. We'll attach all of that below and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you next time.